the Lord. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Well, you know, my wife, she don't know that prophecy. Well, she just she spoke, spoke in tongues and the interpretation came after. That's all in the message. <laughs> That's going to be the centerfold of the message. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. We give you the glory, give you honor and praise. We thank you, Father God, this word will be sown on good ground and it will bear fruits in the hearts of the people. And I give you glory, give you honor and praise. Right now, Heavenly Father, ask that you anoint the ears of the hearer to hear what the Spirit of God will have to say. I do, Father, ask you today that each one here will hear this word accurately and they will hear precisely and they will not just be hearers of what they hear today, but they will go out and be doers of it. For realize, Heavenly Father, the doers to get the results. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the admiration for that in Jesus' name. Right now, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have that fresh anointing to minister your word. I thank you, Father God, the anointing is on your word. I thank you, Father God, your word is what is powerful. Your word is what produces results in people's lives. And I give you glory and honor and praise. And I do, Father, ask you now that I will speak this word accurately, and I will speak it precisely, and I will speak it boldly and with authority. For I the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I realize, Heavenly Father, the joy of the Lord is my strength and is the strength of my life. I pray it now, Father God, in this message, all of you and none of me, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that revelation knowledge shall flow free today, uninterrupted, unhindered by the satanic or demonic force. I thank you, Father, your word should not return to you void, but it shall accomplish the that it would do. Also, Father God, thank you, the Lord, thy God, that cannot lie. And you confirm your word with signs following. And therefore, I declare the signs shall follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, glory. I had done something about dealing with grace and giving. And I want to ask everybody a question and just call for answer. Why should you go to church? Anybody. Why should you go? Why bother to go to church? What's the purpose? Huh? That's part of it. Okay? Part of it. How many of you heard my wife say the prophet? Worship. Now, what is worship? Is this worship? Is that worship? Would you agree? That's worship. You worship. Lift your hand. That's worship. You're giving yourself. You worship him, right? You can dance to the Lord, sing. That's worship. But you know what has happened? The church worship is incomplete. Totally incomplete. And I'm going to show you today, as like an attorney, giving his worship. And when you leave out that piece, you're not corresponding to what God has done. And guess what? Put it like this. God has already given us all things to richly enjoy. He's given us everything already. Everything he's already said. You go to work, guess what? That's God's money, not yours. Not your money. So either, either what happens is that a spirit of mammon got a hold of the church folks. Now, don't get me wrong. There's ministers have to do all kind of con games to get your, get your money. I ain't, I, we're not going to have no $25 line, no $30 line, $100 line, and all that. That stuff is the devil. That's not God. God doesn't operate that way. So now what happens when people see giving, they get afraid. And I can't blame them. What they saw. So worship is giving of myself. The Bible said God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. My worship in giving should be done basically on my relationship with him. Guess what? I can't have a proper relationship. I can't have the presence with me. Why? He's in me, but the presence won't operate. Why? Because I left out that part of worship. Now, God's not trying to put it like this. God, God's something. He gave us everything for us, for us to, to give back to him. And you know, we don't even say thanks. We don't even thank God for our jobs, our home, because we think we did it. This is heavy. 
And the Spirit of the Lord, he dealt with me about it, and, and my spiritual father been dealing with it too, is that this is, this is really where it's at, where the church is missing. Now, we have things happen in our lives as a result. I realized I was worshiped, and guess what? I, I, I was given, and certain things happened. But then something came along that set in. We start to do the mechanics of the corresponding. You know what I'm saying? Just We're trying to get God to do something that he's already done. And I wind up, if I'm not appreciating him for what he's done, like this morning, I wake up, Lord, oh, I just thank you for the home you provided. I thank you for already giving me all things to richly enjoy. And I worship you, I worship you. Now, I'm going to take you to some folks in the Bible that did this. And you know what? Their life wasn't, wasn't that good. <laughs> David was a whoremonger. I can't put it in night. He was. So was Solomon. Solomon was cool. And look, and the Bible says Solomon was the richest man ever was. Why? Worship. Our worship is incomplete. David did everything he wanted to build the Lord's house. Now, here's the argument people said. Well, suppose I give, I worship God. First of all, you should be giving to no ministry, ain't teaching you no word anyway. You ain't getting nothing. You're just throwing your money away. But let's say I give because I'm, I'm, I'm under the influence of God. I'm giving. If the guy burned the church down, I don't care. I worship him. You got to forget about the man. Now, don't, don't be stupid. And you know you got a con artist. Now, you got good sense. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm going to give you some things. I'm going to be going over them again. Worship is an expression of love we have for God. Worship is an expression. How about what I say? Expression of what? Of love we have, we have for God. Worship is an expression of you not trying to get something from God. Worship is an expression, not you trying to get anything from God. I just, I just want to come and worship. I want to get up in the morning and worship him. Now, people that don't do that, the mammon spirit have them. Because it's about you. Christians go to work. When it comes to doing things in the ministry, they'll break their neck on the job, get there early, do everything. But when it comes to God, they don't want to do it. I was here at 6 o'clock this morning. Wow, I love him. I'm a worship. Because you know what? I have a job too, but you know what? This is more important than that. Because you know what? If I worship him, he's going to take care of that. And maybe the problem sometimes is we trying to take care of that. And don't let him take care of that. I'm going to read you a couple more. I'm going to recite them again. Worship is also it's what is coming from you and not from God. Giving is your response to what God has already made available for you. I want to say that one again. Giving is your response to what God has already made available for you. Now. I give not to get blessed, but I give because I'm already blessed. You don't give to get blessed. Now, in Deuteronomy, God told them, if you do this, I'll bless you. You do that. We are already, everybody said, I'm the blessed. I'm the blessed. I'm blessed. So guess what? Satan, mammon, spirit will cry to come in. You can't afford to give to God. You can't afford not to. Because when you go after money first, money will fool you. Been there, tried it. Let me say this to you. God's riches is not the same as world riches. See, you can have a lot of money but you can be poor in peace because you have no peace. You're stressed out. 
You know, look at the world. They go, they get all this money. Most of them, they die early. Unless they have some wisdom. They, but a lot of them die early. Because they're going after money. money. Money is not, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong. I'm not talking against having money. But if that's your priority life, you're going to be a miserable something. You're poor. In peace. And see, I want my peace. I wake up in the morning and, you know, it's just peace. My spiritual father, mom and dad, they said to me and my wife said, man, what are y'all doing? <laughs> Basically because, what it, what it, let me tell you something, what it is. You need the wisdom of God how to take care of your body. We're responsible for taking care of our body. I'm not going to get no food messages today, okay? So don't worry. It's all right. Okay? But you know what? Get in his presence and God will tell you what to do and how to do it. See, I can mention certain things up to you. People are going to do what they want to do anyway. I can't, I can't convince you to go do it. My assignment is to do what the Holy Spirit tells me to teach you. And that's my assignment. I don't care whether man, I, I give a hoop of what people say. You got to get over folks. You got to get over folks whether they like you on your job or they don't like you on your job. Who cares? They ain't paying your bills. Hello? They ain't paying your rent. I had a Christian one time, but they don't like me because I'm a Christian. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Now, I got a couple more, and I'm going to go over and we'll mention them again. I give, I give honor to God because I'm blessed. Giving is honor and thanksgiving. The church has confused the relationship with the benefits. See, people come to church for the benefits. People even come to church just to get their groove and don't care nothing about God because they can boogie you a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with dancing before the Lord. There's nothing wrong with nothing. But what is your motivation? What is your motivation toward giving? What is your motivation toward coming to church? What is your motivation for the serving? Is your motivation, is it a problem? Are you just looking at, oh, that's just pastor telling me what to do. You got a problem. You got a problem. Because you're supposed to do it under the Lord. I remember one time the Lord spoke to me just as clearly. And I didn't want to get involved in no sound system. I wanted to usher and greet the people. And he says, I want you to over there. I said, why? He said, whatever your hands find to do, go do it. And a lot of times we don't hear from God because our relationship is upside down. We spend more time listening to what the world say. They're the authority. If you think it's authority, you just look at what's going on in the political syndrome right now. Everybody got a different, different opinion of what is right now. My opinion, the Bible says, let God's word be truth and every man a liar. That's in Romans 3. You can look that up later. I'm not going there. Y'all okay? I love you. Amen. Now we're going, to get, we're going to get to a man, Joseph. I want you to look at Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 and 2. Then we'll go down to verse 21 and 23. Then we'll go to Galatians 3, 3 14. <laughs> I'm just joking. You know? we, we're going there, but not that fast, though. Amen. Genesis 39, verse 1 and 2. Watch this. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potomus the office of Pharaoh, captain of the guard in Egypt, and brought him in the hands of the Israelites, which had brought him down hither. Verse 2. Now watch this. And the Lord was with who? Now, you, in New Testament terms, the Lord's with you. And during that time, God could only come down and overshadow and then he leave. But it said the Lord was with more. Now what that means? God's presence was with Joseph. See, you and I, we got God on the inside of the Holy Spirit living, but we want his presence on the outside of us so people know that something's about us, that something's going on. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a what? What was he? Why was he prophet? Because the Lord was with him. The presence was with him, and the presence made him prosper. He, Joseph went in jail. 
and he became the captain in charge of the jail. No matter where it went, Joseph was prosperous. See, you got to see yourself that you are prosperous and that you are blessed. No matter what your pocketbook said, no matter what's going on, you are prosperous and you are the blessed. You got to see yourself that way. That's who you are. See, a lot of times what we look at, we're looking for the spectacular miracle and we're not grateful for the little things. Grateful. Hey, I'm not evicted. There's homeless people over there under the highway sitting under the bridge. And you're giving, you, you, you giving thanks to your job. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now, go down to verse 20. Twenty-one. Twenty-three we're going. Watch this. But the Lord was with Joseph. What was the Lord? He was with who? Now, don't you want the Lord with you? The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor. Or he, he gave him grace. He gave his unmerited favor to Joseph. No matter wherever Joseph went, Joseph went, he has favor. And right now I see a lot of this favor working in my life. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper and the prison. Now, where I work, I have much favor. And you know that the enemy tried to do everything he can to try to knock me out of the box. He said he couldn't. Because I'm, I'm just going to worship him. I worship you, Lord. I praise you that you're with me. You'll never leave me nor forsake him. You okay? Now I'm able to keep me from falling and present me faultless. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. We're uh, um, go to the next verse, twenty-two. Let me say this to you. Listen very careful. Go. Start taking the word serious. I go to bed with an earplug. I'm, I'm going to get me one of those. I had, I had one before. One of those pillow things. And I'm, I'm going to let that word, I got a message. I take that word and, and let it repeat all night long. See, because your spirit's alive to God. I heard somebody say something I saw, I saw on Facebook, and they were saying, they were talking about dreams, how Satan has taking over you a Christian, taking over your spirit. Satan cannot take over your spirit. A demon has no access to your spirit. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of there. The Bible said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, he can throw thoughts in your mind, but he can't take, he can put houses, forms of thinking in your mind, but he can't take over your spirit. He, Satan had it before, before you were born again. Once you're born again, he has no authority over your spirit whatsoever. Now watch this. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph hands all the prisoners that were in prison. Now, now Joseph, Joseph in charge went to jail, and he's still prospering. In jail, he's still prospering. Why? Because God was with him. And whatever they did there, he was, the, he was the doer of it. Wow. Wow. Let me say that, Lord, okay. The Apostle Paul, they put him in jail, and what did he start doing? Oh, did he start doing this? Oh, they put me in jail. It's not fair. I'm a Christian. They said him and Silas, what they start, Paul, and who, who's with Paul? Um, who's with Paul? I just they, they, they start to sing praises. And the jail started to shake. Why did the jail shake? Because the presence was there. They start to worship him. And I, I taught it my dumb self that being dumb, not knowing. See, let me tell you what about God. God is always. You can't handle all the revelation one time at one time. He had to get the people into faith. You understand, too? And, 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 and everything went in phases. 
And you know what? We're we still, we still going to be growing. But you know what? This worship thing right here is what Satan and his mammon demon don't want you to get. This is it. This is it. I'm at a point, I'm going to worship him with my tithes. I'm going to worship him with my gift. And you know, if nothing never happened, if I didn't get nothing back, I don't care. I got peace with him. I know he loves me. And that's better than anything. Because you know what? I know sometimes we feel we're going to live forever, but we ain't going to be here forever. They're going to put you in a coffin to do something to cremate you sooner or later. Once you hit this earth, time you're born, you're, you're headed to die. See, you got folks. Oh, I worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. And when it, when it comes to giving, oh, well, there's another story. What happens if they worship? And I'm going to show you today how to worship him, what you're giving. How, how you do it. And if you've already, you already gave already on the internet, sometimes people do, they put their time. I'm going to show you how you take your phone up and you still worship him. Remember the woman that came, she gave out of her last a mate. And I'm going to say something. Don't ever, if you come to worship God, don't ever come in without a, a, a gift we worship him. We always told our kids, Bring, it ain't nothing. They don't, get, they don't get a penny. They get some money. Teach them how to tithe. Show them how to. It's worship to God. It's not the church trying to get your money. Although the church, you listen. God set up the church, and no matter whatever going through the system, Satan. We, we got good things in the world, but Satan will get in there and mess it up. I mean, a good thing I can get in my car and drive down here in the morning. But it's a bad thing if a drunk get behind the wheel. Not the car's fault. See, and, and so many people, I say all the time, so many people are so prone. They say, well, my car take me where I want to go. Your car don't take you where you want to go. You take the car where you want to go. <laughs> Amen. Did I get the 23 yet? And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph hands all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatever they did there, he was the doer of it. J Joseph was in charge. Now, that's just my foundation. Now we're going to preach the message. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Verse 13 and 14. Watch this. Christ have redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. Everybody says, I've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. I only have the blessing. Christ have redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. Being made, what was he made? A curse for us. He was made a curse for us. For it's written, cursed everyone that hang on the tree. Who hang on the tree? Who hang on the tree? Jesus. It was a tree. We call, we call it a cross, but it was really a tree. Tree came from a tree. Curse everyone. Hang. Why, now, why did he hang on the tree? Look at verse 14. Why did he hang on the tree? Now, you got to tell me your boss on your job died for you? Why, did he, why, why, why was he made a curse? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Through who? Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise. How? How we receive it? Through faith. Now, whether you know it or not, you ever wonder why the Jewish people are so blessed? Because they got a covenant. They still under the Abrahamic covenant. Even some of them might be following the law, but they still have a covenant. And that's a physical covenant. It's still in course, in, 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 in operation. But understand this. With us, it's different. We got the physical and we got the spiritual part of it. We got all of it. Now, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise through faith. Now, look at Ephesians 1, verse 3. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. 
Now, if somebody gave you $50,000 right now, what would you say? Yeah. Now, if they gave you fifty thousand, you said thank you. Watch this scripture, and I'm gonna show you something right after. Remind me, I gotta go back to it. Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. Ladies and gentlemen, I operate in the different, different realm. I operate in the spiritual realm. You're trying to get things done in the physical without going to the spiritual who you are. Your spirit is connected to heaven. He has already blessed me. So guess what? Jesus died. Guess what? Why did he die? So he redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. So I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. So now, how much more I should bring my gifts in and now thank him that he's already blessed me with all spiritual blessings. Thanking him for my home. Thanking him for my car. Thanking him for everything. Thanking him I got a job. And if you don't have a job, he's already right. Still thank him. So he's already, now he said he already blessed you with the spirit. Now, remember the Bible says, don't store up your treasures on earth, but store up your treasures in heaven. Now, you don't, you're not given to try to get God to do something. You just correspond to what he's already done. He wants you to come in and thank him for what he's done. And as you correspond and thank, the presence will be there. And guess what? The benefits will come. You don't have to go after the benefits. Go after him. That's worship. And people... They take church like nothing. They go to work every day, but when it comes to God, they got a problem. It's too hard. I just sleep on Sunday. It's just hard. It's hard because you say it's hard. So guess what? That means if a person go to work every day, you get them to go to work every day, and they have a problem, and they, they're born again, have a problem coming to church. What what has a hold of them? Mammon. Because that money makes them move. But the presence, they don't have the presence of God, so they can't move. And see, so you come to church, you come to service so you can learn how to enter into the present. You learn things about worship. You learn things about the present that you normally won't learn. That's really so important. You go back to YouTube and you listen to that message again because let me tell you, I guarantee you, 90% 90 of it you didn't get. You didn't get. That's the reason I'm not, I have to watch myself and I go around certain denominations. I, that stuff don't feed me. You got to feed me. Open your Bible up. Show me what the words say. Feed me. You know what I'm saying to you? Don't give me no chilling. Give me some real stuff. <laughs> Let's just talk about my chilling. <laughs> I don't eat chilling. You won't eat mine, but I don't. Now, can't you keep chilling away from me? Amen. Now, y'all okay? Everybody all right? You know, we're going to be in this. And please, keep coming. You'll get it. Don't go on the guilt, go on the guilt because you're not doing it yet. Don't go on the guilt. I'm just showing you why. God never, ever tell us to do nothing that, that he don't have our, should I say, our, his, our interest at hand. He knows you. He created. A lot of times we have this problem that God... God, God don't know nothing about operating down here in this world. Huh? He created, he, you don't think he know nothing about it? You don't think he knows more than what you know? I know I sound a little loud, but sometimes loud is good. And I, I have to realize, I'm talking to y'all too, but people watching on the internet too. Amen. Y'all okay? Now, go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And see, you got the other side of this thing. People going around telling you, oh, you know, you're not supposed to, you, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to have money because the guy got money. Could it be, who's that? Church fillet. What's they call it? Church, church what? Chicken place. Chicken place. 
I'm getting the church chicken oil mixed. What chicken? What chicken fill they? They close on Sunday. You know why they close on Sunday? They honor God. They honor God. That we don't have to work. We're already the blessed. We don't have to work on Sunday to try to get people's money. There's a supermarket in Florida. They got all the supermarkets. Something down, down there, guess what? He closes on Sunday. He still do more business than they do. What's up with that stuff? It's honor, y'all. It's worship. It's honor. And, you know, when you start to do it, Satan's going to make you say, oh, this is a waste of time. That's his game. That's the mammoth spirit going to kind of talk to you, try to talk you right out of it. I, I think I mentioned before about the mate. I, I bring that back up. The woman, she gave of her. It was, it, was, it, was, it was out of her need. She gave at last. And Jesus said, this woman gave more than these guys that was rich. It wasn't the amount of money. It's what it's worth. See, 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 you know your heart. You, 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 you know in the area where you're at. You know, I'm going to tell you something. If, 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 there, if there's a need in this ministry, and I got it, 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 it's going. Because guess what? I'm giving it to God, man. I'm giving it to God. And I know this is good. I'm giving it to God. And most people claim they, like I said a lot of times, they can't do it. People go do what they want to do. They'll, they'll walk in McDonald's and spend 40 bucks and think nothing of it. I look at one of the McDonald's in Western, I'm not down in McDonald's. <coughs> Sunday morning, and one and one in Patterson. They lined up all the way down Market Street just to get in there and get breakfast. Eat, to buy something that really had no nutritional value whatsoever. And spend... Hey, take, take some of that money and worship God with it. And eat a banana. You'll be all right. That's what I had for breakfast this morning, a banana. I'm fine. I'm not hungry. And, I, and you notice I don't walk in tired either. Why? You know what? My focus and my worship is him. I want to I go to bed and have him on my mind. Now watch this. Charge them that are rich in this world. Now notice he said charge them that are rich. He's talking to the Christian. That they be not high minded. He don't want you to get high minded. See, that's what people do. I had some folks came into the ministry and they got blessed and they got high minded. They ain't think they have to go to church no more. They ain't need it. <coughs> take, take off on Sunday now. I don't have to be there on Sunday now. I'm working on this big thing, this big project now. And one person did it, and they, they went on the pride, working on the pride every Sunday. They took off and work every Sunday, and, and, and they thought he had it. They were going to make $150,000 on the pride, and the whole thing fell. Why? Worship. Hmm. Worship. That's, that's what you were created for, to worship. Now, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high might nor trust in uncertain riches. But trust in who? Who are you supposed to trust in? In the living God. That's where your trust. See, people got their trust in mammon, money, who give us riches, all things to enjoy. I'll say to you like this. Whatever I do, I'm on time. I go to work on time. Sometimes I go early. But you know, when I serve God, I'm on time. I'm all, always been early. You, you ask my wife. I serve just like everybody else served in this ministry. You ask my wife, was I always there early? Before time. Because I was doing it unto the Lord. Never complained. Never walked around. I was tired. Went and did crusades. Five days of crusades. Didn't get, didn't get, didn't get to bed until 1 o'clock in the morning and got up at 5 o'clock. Didn't think about time. I'm doing this to worship. Look how many people get saved. I, I, I want to worship. I want to be part of what God wants, not part of what I want. Think about this. A girl one night was at Nassau Coliseum. She came to the altar that night, and I was a part of the worship there. See, see serving is worship. Yeah, yeah, you better get that. Serving is worship. And you got a right, wrong attitude about worship, and, and I tell you to do something, you got a problem with it. See, guess what? You're breaking your worship and don't know it. And 
That night, that girl came to the altar and got saved, went on the Grand Central Parkway in, in New York, and she, she got a flat, and the car hit and killed them. See, we got to learn how to thank God for what we, thank God. Uh, I thank God all the time. My kids are in Christ, and they're still living. I thank you, Lord. See, God's been in operation. You don't even know when he's in operation. See, that's when you got to get in his presence so you, you'll start to really understand what God is really doing and you don't even know it because you're looking for the big thing. And you never see the big because you, 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 so, you never see the big because you're big looking at the big and not being thankful for the little. Amen. Everybody all right? So now, watch what he said. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. Now what? Nor trust in uncertain riches, but what? In the living God. Now watch this. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Mm, mm, mm. He, he said he give it to you richly. All things to enjoy. But see, that's the, if, if you're not spending time every day with God, spending time hearing the word, you'll go to work, you, 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 you'll go to work acting just like the world do, and you do, do everything just like the world do. Because see, it's more, you, you, you don't come here, you come here to worship, yes, but th this is not where you're worship in. Your worship is supposed to be at home. So he gives us all things to richly enjoy, right? Go back to Ephesians 1, 3 again, because I left one out. I want to go back to 3 and 4 again. You got to get this. You got to get it. You know, I used to go in the store, and after I got high, I'm talking about me, and cash my check in the liquor store and spend $60 and think nothing of it. Brought it home, you know, my wife, I got the stuff. Didn't think nothing of it. Why? I was being motivated by the spirit of mammon and didn't know it. You all watch Blessed be the God of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place. In Christ. Notice, are you in Christ? So that's where your spirit, that's where your blessing, because you're in him. Remember Jesus told the Peter to let down your net for a drought. And Peter said, we toil all night and take enough. Like, what do you know about fishing? We're fishermen. You're a carpenter. And Peter Peter had to, had to repent because when Jesus said, let it down, whether he saw fish, fish going to be there. Watch this. Blessed be the God of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. Now watch verse 4. I eliminate I want to show you this. Watch this. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Everybody says, I'm holy. You're not holy based on your behavior. You'll be holy because he's in you. You're holy. And without blame, before him, in love. See, we got to get a great revelation how much God loves us. When you find out somebody, let me tell you, if, 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 if I say I love my wife and I don't talk to her, I don't commune with her. That's not love. We come to worship him to show him our appreciation of what he's done and come more so to get trained so we know how to worship him the proper way. We, we got a wrong idea from the church what worship really is and why you come to church. There's churches that pile in with people. They don't have no idea. They think they, they worship God. They're not worshiping him. They for the entertainment, the religious format.
tide line, lining up, got the tide line. One for the people get county tied, stand up in a line. That's embarrassing for the people who don't tie. It's terrible. You're giving it between you and the Lord. I can't try, I'm not gonna never try to make you give something. Crazy. So get it. That we should be holy without blame before him in love. In love. Every, see, everything go back to love. See, God gave his best. And if we want to worship, we should be giving our best. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. And 14, we're going to look at that. You, you hear this, you need to go back and listen to it. See, a love supposed to come over you. How, the love that's in, on the inside should start radiating out of you because of how much God loves you. Look what he's done for you. A farmer knows he got land out there and it will produce a harvest. But he knows if he doesn't put no seed in the ground, and the Bible says money is still seed. You don't put no seed in the ground. Guess what happened? He won't get no corn. He was looking for tomatoes, and he didn't put no seed in the ground. And the ground is designed to, to grow. Just like your spirit is the ground designed to grow results. Your spirit, man, the present is designed to come up, come up on you, and the present will produce certain things. I, I, I remember one time we wanted to move in this place, and it was what we could afford at the time, it was a certain level, and they said, no, you're not going to get the place. You can't get it. And so I, I went out in the park, and I started singing songs. Hallelujah, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And I just started worshiping and sing songs. And then and after I got the Lord spoke, he said, you go over and tell that place, that, that apartment, you can't function with nothing but the corp rules. I did it. Next lady called me. She had a nerve to call me on the phone and said, she said, she said, God got to be with you. That's the exact word she said. Because you ain't supposed to get this, but we're giving it to you. What happened? The presence. It's the presence, y'all. It's this presence being on you. Like I told you, I administered this guy one time, and he was looking at me, he was, and he said, Man, there's a light on you. There's a light. He saw the presence. I didn't see it, but he saw it. He saw it. I didn't see it at all. He kept saying that light meant so bright. God was doing something. I don't know. Now, what was I at? I told you, Romans 4, watch this, 13. For the promise that it should be that that he should be the heir of the world. Everybody said Jesus is the heir. Was not to Abraham or his seed. It wasn't to Abraham. It was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. But how did it come? But through what? The righteousness of faith. That's when you got to have a righteous consciousness, not a sin consciousness. You are, everybody say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. That's who I am. I might not experience it now, but that's who I am. Whatever God says about you, that's what you are. And you know what? Never mind whether you're experiencing that or not. Guess what? If you keep doing that, you will experience it. Verse 14. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. It's void. And the promise made of none effect. In other words, the promise you got has nothing to do with the law. You're going to follow the law and you're subject to the law. Got one more. Um, yeah. Romans 4, 15 and 16. Yeah, I got to go still. Watch this. Mm. Because the law worketh wrath. 
How many people say, God is pouring out his wrath in the earth? How many of y'all say that now? That's what's going on. Baloney. The wrath came in the earth when Adam committed treason to God's been here. He don't got to pour it out. See the stuff we say? A storm come, act of God. How did God say that to me yesterday? I just, I, I just wasn't led to say anything to him. He said, well, you know, y'all didn't know what I do part time. They said, people are dying slow right now, you know. But, but, but anyway, he said, you know, he said, God, he said, God, God let them stay here for a while. Well, I said, that, that, that could be, but, but understand it. But they have this idea that God takes you. God don't take you. When you die, you're born again. You go to be with the Lord. He don't have to take you. The Bible says you're already seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're already there. Only thing that's died, you're there. Man, new life. Energy like you never had it before. Paul even made a statement. He said, a die is gain. He said, but I'm betwitched. I'm trying to decide whether, whether, whether to be here or to leave. But he said, it's more needful I stay here. But still, the die is gain, man. Don't, don't, don't feel sorry for somebody in a casket if you know they're born again. What for? Especially if they've been sick. They don't want to get back in their body. But what? Watch this. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So we're not under law, so there's no transgression to us. What's the next verse? 16? I got 16 now? Watch this. Therefore, it is a faith. Now watch this. It is a faith that it may, might be how? By grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed. Everybody say, I'm Abraham's seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that is also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Based on the Abrahamic covenant, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Y'all okay? Wow. Now, I said you Abraham, see, go to Galatians 3.29. That's what I'm going to close on. And then we'll pick, we, we, we got some more. Everybody say, he got some more. Galatians 3.29. If ye be crisis, are you crisis? I'll wait till you get there. And if you be crisis, then are you Abraham's seed? I'm the seed of Abraham. Amen. And heirs according to what? Your heir. Everybody say, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. Yeah. The Bible didn't talk about, where was it at? Uh, did I put that on there? Um, the Bible talks about the way you are joint heir with Christ. That means simply this. Whatever Christ got, you got. Whatever Christ got, you got. And you got, you got to see yourself like that. If you don't see yourself, it's not going to change. If you, look, you, you, you see yourself the way the world sees you, and that's how the devil sees you, you're agreeing with the devil and don't know it. Because you're doing your, you're walking what you call in the flesh. And the Bible said the flesh don't please God. Hmm. Amen. Were y'all blessed today? Now, we're going to get into what you call worship. I want you to put that song on, Paul. We're going to get into what you call, we're going to worship the God with our substance. You desire an offering envelope. I want everybody to participate. You don't have no money to pay.